Welcome to Across the Balkans. I'm Rafi Salatic. Great to have your company. Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic says the West is to blame for the anti-government demonstrations in his country more than a week after the elections. He says the protesters demanding the annulment of Serbia's general election are attempting to overthrow his government with help from abroad. Vucic's ruling Serbian Progressive Party won 47% of the votes, but the international monitoring mission said the elections were held under unjust conditions, citing intimidation and cases of vote buying. Thousands of people organized by the Serbia Against Violence Coalition took to the streets of Belgrade to protest, accusing Vucic of election theft and calling for new elections. The demonstrations turned violent after protesters tried to enter Belgrade's city council, breaking windows. Police pushed them back using tear gas and pepper spray. The opposition claims excessive force was used and some of their supporters were beaten up. At least 38 people have been detained. We have been posing out for days to foreign factor what is going on. Many pretended to be naive and do not want to hear nor to see what is happening. I want to thank those foreign services who made clear that they know what is coming and informed and provided their information to our intelligence services who responded in timely manner and won exactly what thugs are planning. Let's cross now to the Serbian capital, Belgrade. Natan Albahari is there for us. He is a member of the Movement of Free Citizens, which is a part of Serbia Against Violence Coalition. He is also a member of National Assembly of Serbia. Natan, great to have you with us. You must be very busy protesting these days. Thank you very much for, for this invitation. Yes, we're out on the streets uh, every every evening uh, this past uh, this past week. Yeah, we followed that here on Across the Balkans. Now, uh, President Vucic, we've heard him there, says foreign actors are to blame for what we are seeing in Belgrade. What would be your response to that? Well, uh, you know, this is uh, the continuation of Mr. Vucic's spin uh, uh, on the on the events and finding uh, enemies abroad, which is usually the playbook uh, that Mr. Vucic and, of course, uh, other other autocrats uh, use uh, to indicate whenever something uh, something happens in the country, uh, something that does not go to the way that the the president imagined it would. Uh, usually, then uh, Western actors are are blamed for this, and we, as the Serbia Against Violence opposition, which is a pro-European opposition, uh, are of course then tied uh, with the West and accused of being uh, either on their on their paychecks, so that we are spies, that we're saboteurs, uh, and that we're not working in the interest uh, of of Serbia, which cannot be more further from the truth, because what we're doing is we're trying to fight for a democratic Serbia, for a European Serbia, which uh, is at the core of the interests of, of Serbia, and that's to become a member of the, of the European Union. Right. You're blaming uh, the government that the voting in Belgrade uh, and in general in Serbia was rigged. What evidence do you have that that was the case? So the the biggest uh, the biggest problem. I mean, there are lots of problems, but let's let's focus on on the biggest one uh, for for the elections uh, was that uh, especially in the city of Belgrade on the local level for the city of Belgrade uh, assembly, uh, there were tens of thousands of voters who do not have uh, legal uh, residency in uh, in Belgrade. These voters were brought from neighboring countries, like from uh, Republika Srpska and Bosnia Herzegovina, or they were brought from uh, various municipalities in Serbia, which were not having local local elections. So the the evidence that's emerged uh, over the days uh, after the the vote, uh, uh, with our uh, uh, helped with uh, with the international with partners uh, in Serbia, Crta, one of the NGOs that followed the the elections, and uh, uh, did a very detailed analysis on how the uh, this concept of migration of voters. Uh, from other places in Serbia or neighboring countries. So these are people who have Serbian citizenship and they are allowed to vote on the national level. The question is, uh, how come suddenly these people were found on the regist registry list, uh, electoral registry list, to vote in a place where they don't live, where they don't have residency? 
And uh, evidence has emerged that over the past period, uh, over the past year, uh, a large number of people were put into these electoral lists that do not have residency uh, in, in the city of, of Belgrade and uh, allowing them then to be able to cast a vote for, for the local elections. Considering that the difference in the vote tally between uh, Mr. Vucic's uh, party and our coalition survey against violence was only within a couple of tens of thousands of votes, uh, demonstrates that we would have been declared the winner if we did not have these migrant voters that they that they brought in. Do you really um, believe that in Belgrade you would be the opposition would be able to, to win if this didn't happen with the with the people being brought from Bosnia and Herzegovina and Montenegro? Absolutely. I'm, I'm confident as our, our coalition partners that we would have been uh, the first uh, on, uh, to, to declare victory in Belgrade. It would not have been uh, a landslide victory, but it would have been a victory nevertheless. We would have come first. Uh, which uh, is a very important, uh, uh, not only in terms of election, but also from a psychological perspective, because the opposition in Serbia has not won any election since 2012. And these elections uh, were the first ones since 2012, where all the polls have ind indicated that uh, our coalition alliance was leading in Belgrade, was above 20% nationally, and was expected to achieve the best results of uh, any opposition or any pro-European opposition list in the past decade in our in our struggle against uh, Mr. Kurtz's regime. Right. Uh, we also discussed uh, the elections even before Serbians voted, and, and it seems to me that polling was showing that in Belgrade is was the only place where Vucic's uh, party uh, could have possibly been challenged. Now, international observers uh, claim uh, something similar as you, that some issues around these elections need to be investigated. How likely is that the international community, uh, the EU particularly, um, as Serbia is an EU candidate country, how can we expect any concrete steps to be taken following these accusations? Well, look, first off, um, if I can just remind your viewers, uh, the uh, OC ODIA report that the election observers presented right after the election was one of the most negative reports and one of the most uh, uh, really uh, astonishing uh, things that were said in this report. And it was said by the observers themselves at the press conference where they were talking about uh, vote buying, ballot stuffing. Uh, fake voters, uh, not using correct notification to vote, group voting, family voting, and of course the migration, uh, migratory uh, voters as well. So um, those were the only things that were happening on election day, not to also include the, the fact that the observers indicated uh, the lack of media plurality and the lack of media presence on the national frequencies of the opposition, and as well, uh, as the domination of President Vucic in all the media and all of the election discourse, even though it, these were not presidential elections. Mr. Vucic was not a candidate in these elections, yet he was the face of this campaign, and it looked like he was out campaigning for, for his uh, position. Uh, one of the polls right before the elections, uh, also from, from Crta, indicated that as many as 16% of the people in Serbia thought we were having presidential elections. Uh, why am I saying this? Uh, it, it is, it's because it's important to see uh, the level of uh, personalization of Mr. Vucic uh, uh, in Serbia and basically uh, having politics and the whole process being driven around right. one man. Uh, Nathan, I don't have much time left, but I do want to talk about what do you plan to do next. Opposition seems very determined. Some of the leaders of the opposition are on hunger strike. Some of them, including the activists from your movement, have been arrested. Uh, what is the plan for the upcoming days and are these people still detained? So just to, to update uh, for our members, uh, some have been uh, released. Uh, others are still uh, in prison. And what's, what's worrisome is the amount of young people, of students who were picked up and arrested uh, uh, the several days ago after the protests in front of the city assembly. And some of these, them are still in prison. Uh, they are being charged with uh, insurrection and violent overthrow of the constitutional order, which, to be frank, is, is rather ridiculous uh, considering uh, the small-scale protest and 
the fact that these are 18, 19 year old uh, students for who, as, as our lawyers have indicated, there was almost no evidence that they were included in these activities. These were people that were just picked up uh, by the police in those in those moments. Our uh, next steps uh, are, of course, to continue putting pressure on the on the government. Uh, we will be continuing our nightly protests. At the same time, we are in communication uh, constant communications with our partners from the European Union, uh, and we appeal to them to, to act quickly regarding both the allegations uh, and the evidence coming out that the vote was rigged uh, on December 17th, and also looking at this, uh, as you can see in your, in your pictures, the police brutality against the protesters uh, the other day that requires immediate and swift uh, uh, response also from uh, from the international uh, Nathan, just briefly, we've heard from the U.S. ambassador in Serbia who condemned the violence on the streets. What do you make of their reaction? The U.S. State Department had issued uh, more direct uh, uh, critiques of uh, the way that the vote was held, and both the ambassador and the State Department have called for an immediate investigation on uh, the effects and then what happened with uh, with the elections. Uh, to be frank, uh, we don't have much faith uh, that our own institutions in Serbia, which were have been captured by uh, by Mr. Vucic's uh, party, can do an impartial investigation, and this is why. We are appealing to the OC and the EU uh, to help us uh, with this investigation and send their international observers to make sure we have an impartial uh, findings of what actually happened and how we can move forward uh, and get ready for the next elections because we will most likely be having the elections repeated in Belgrade and other local elections in the spring of, of next year. So we have to make sure that the conditions are, are acceptable, that we can partake in these, in these elections and have a result that really represents uh, the will of the people and the citizens. Nathan Al-Bahari, great to have you with us on Across the Balkans. Thank you.